Hello watch enthusiasts. Now today I have yet again another motorsport inspired wristwatch. And this is rather a curious one from a, a new brand, Dorenzo. And these watches are assembled in Switzerland. They do feature a Japanese uh, movement, but uh, there, there is no shame in that in my eyes. But they tap a market which I feel hasn't yet been, um, uh, been, been addressed. Because we see a lot of motorsport inspired watches and a lot of uh, quartz chronographs, which can be quite excellent. And we also do see now from brands such as, and I talk about them a lot because I feel they're quite a good, good example, Autodromo, at the higher price points. But I feel that there isn't really any brand producing really high quality watches around the two to three hundred pound mark with very reliable and high quality automatic movements and excellent design towards the, the, the motorsport enthusiast or the lover of classic racing. And this watch, inspired by the Maserati 250F of uh, Juan Manuel Fangio um, in the 1957 uh, Grand Prix season, really does capture that to that market and certainly captures my imagination in terms of its design. However, before I begin the video, I would like to encourage you all to join the Watch Guys, which is my group on Snups, the social media platform for sharing pictures of your collections and interests, and where you can discuss matters of horology with myself and indeed other enthusiasts, and where I'll do my utmost to reply to any questions or video requests you happen to give me. Therefore, I would strongly encourage you to follow the link down below and, uh, and download the app, which is available for iOS or Android, um, depending on what you're using, and join the 700 or so other individuals who are using this group now and sharing the, the pictures and, and details of their collections and any questions they have to get the most out of this channel. Now, before I talk about the context of the watch and why I find this particular style so interesting, I would like to talk about the packaging, because I feel it's very clean and simple, and I think does reflect the way in which the, the brand approaches um, putting them the most uh, effort into the watch itself rather than the packaging necessarily, but whilst providing the, the buyer with really everything you might need. And for the price of around £300 at the present time, these watches do offer exceptional value. And the outer packaging is simply this very simple box with the brand logo, as well as uh, DRZ Type 250F, as you can see. And of course 250F being the reference of Fangio's uh, Maserati. And I'll talk about the inspiration of the watch once I'm actually talking about the watch itself. Now the box itself opens up to uh, to reveal a, uh, a carrying case, which again is something which I think a lot of brands have have realised in recent years that we uh, we watch enthusiasts like to have for travelling as well as for simple convenience, because a nice leather um, uh, leather pouch or indeed uh, a watch fold will be far more convenient to the to the owner of a watch than, for example, a large wooden box, despite uh, the, the the aesthetics of that. And this is again very nice quality leather. It's slightly distressed as well. And does feature a, a very nice, a nice grain to it, which isn't too too tight, which is often a problem with these um, uh, these 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 uh, rolls or folds uh, in the more um, more budget friendly watches, because they tend to be low quality leather and don't feel good. Whereas this is very very soft and is nicely embossed with the logo. Again, it's held together using this uh, this this elastic and folds open to reveal slots for a card or passport for travelling, as well as space for an extra strap, as well as the timepiece itself. Now the timepiece itself comes out rather easily like so and is revealed to be rather an interesting and very simple and minimalistic take on the racing wristwatch. Now this is the watch in question and it really is a wonderful piece to look at. And I can say this honestly, this is not a sponsored video in any way I and mean, I would like to make that clear at the start of this video because I do feel my integrity is very very important. This is a prototype that I'm showing. Um, and, uh, and as a result, several changes may be made to the watch uh, in terms of, um, for a start, the detailing on the case back, for instance, will be slightly different for the, the final model. But certainly I'm not being paid in any way to produce this video, and it really is out of the fact that I do believe in the product and think that it does offer something very interesting for the price. So I really would like to stress as a result of that that I am impartial in this video, and I will point out various uh, points which I don't think are quite so wonderful about the watch. But overall, I'm very, very impressed. And uh, Dorenzo was a brand founded in 2015 uh, by their founder, Sergio uh, Godoy Dorenzo, and he's an architect and now watch designer. And the inspiration for this watch is taken from the Maserati 250F. And this is a car which is known uh, in the, the motorsport uh, world as being one of the really great Formula One cars, um, which gained popularity and, and its fame in 1957 with uh, Juan Manuel Fangio, again, an incredibly well-known racing driver with a uh, I suppose the 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 the, the possible um, uh, distinction of being the the greatest racing driver of all time, though I would rank uh, Ed and Senna up there as well. I can say that um, that this this watch does take inspiration from the dials, for instance, within the, the cabin of this watch, 
which very famously carried him to, to an incredible victory in, in uh, 1957 at the, at the Nürburgring, where he, he broke the, um, the lap record uh, a great many times in the last 10 laps of the race. I believe nine times in the last 10 laps, which truly is an incredible feat and I think is represented by the, the, the delicate and, and understated features of this watch while still showing that clear motorsport backbone and DNA. And starting off with the dial, we have a matte black dial, which as you can see is slightly textured. So that cream writing is, uh, is applied to the surface of the dial and features this, this rather wonderful uh, railway effect um, or track effect around the edge of the dial. And this acts as both the minute and, and second track and, and is very legible. But I like the way they've, they've left out the, 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 uh, the graduations between 55 and 5 seconds. And this breaks the dial up and I feel makes it look much, much more similar to the, um, the, the, the tachymeter in a, what, in a racing car, rather, um, due to the fact that they wouldn't have a complete circle. And similarly, this is again echoed through the way the numerals have a, a sort of a, a strangely art deco flair to them, but also have that clearly utilitarian aesthetic, which is, is shown on, on racing car dials, especially of that era. And this is helped uh, by the, the, the minimal text on the dial as well, with simply Dorenzo at 12 o'clock and automatic, and the logo at 6 o'clock. Again, these watches will be assembled in Switzerland, though admittedly the, the movement, for instance, is a, a Seiko NH35, and as such is, is a Japanese movement. Though this is one of uh, Seiko's higher-end movements in terms of their non-Grand Seiko area, on the basis that the movement is, as you can see, on the dial automatic, and is indeed um, hacking, as well as hand-winding if I push the ground back in. So that is an area where this movement does excel with a longer power reserve of about 50 hours, which again is something which, which is practical for someone, um, and a bit, a bit more practical, I feel, than, for example, ETA power reserves of 38 hours. Now, the hands are also an area where I feel they've excelled in terms of producing a watch which is very true to the originals, whilst being legible on the wrist and clear to read. And this is shown by these hands which really are unique in terms of their styling, because they feature this sort of um, a curved and, and yet pointed shape, which is unique to each hand, because the hour hand is very different to the minute hand, despite their inherent similarity in colour. And this is down to the fact that the base of the, the, the hour hand is much, much larger than the minute hand, and does demonstrate a certain levelling, which is again true to the, the, original, uh, the original dials in the cars. Furthermore, this, does, this doesn't suffer from the, the, hand, uh, the short hand issue seen on, on a lot of watches, which uh, a lot of people aren't keen on. That's where the hand, uh, notably the minute hand, doesn't quite reach the, the, the track whereas he really don't have that problem whatsoever. Furthermore, the, the second hand is again very well balanced and does resemble the hands on, um, uh, on the rev counters in these cars um, with the, the, the entirely uh, red painted colouring, which is clearly very, very well applied and, and is better applied than watches I've seen at this price uh, as a result of the, uh, the fact that the whole hand has been painted, not just, um, not just the surface. And this, this small detail really does make a world of difference when looking at the watch in person. However, this does lead me on to just one uh, small critique I have with this watch, which is that I would have appreciated a bit of uh, a loom on the dial. And again, this is similar to other racing watches on the market, because n not, not, uh, not very many of them do feature loom. But I feel it would be great to see some, some luminescent material on the dial, on the basis that there's so much uh, cream um, and, uh, and the use of cream paint, which could quite easily be, um, be swapped for Superluminova, which would be fantastic to see in, in later versions of this 600-piece this limited edition. Now, the outward build of this watch is an area where I feel the designers absolutely excelled because it's a beautiful, beautiful watch in terms of its aesthetics and I feel makes one stop and savour the watch all the more due to its simplicity of design. And it doesn't have a date on the dial as, as you've seen, which again does draw the eye to the watch as a, a, an experience rather than a, as much of a practical item as, for example, um, a, a sort of a, a more complex sports watch. And in terms of design, we see a 40mm uh, cylindrical case, but it's more complex than that, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. And it's fully polished in, uh, in 316L stainless steel. The dimensions from lug to lug are 48mm on the website, although my measurements would suggest 47 But again, with drop-down lugs, it fits extremely well and will, will really uh, sit on the wrist very comfortably, as well as having that domed case back, which further reduces the thickness of the watch and allows it to sit comfortably on the wrist and sink into the wrist further. And the thickness of the watch is already fairly slim at 10.10 millimetres, and is watch resistant to 50 metres, which is perfectly reasonable for, uh, for the occasional splash, um, and you could technically go swimming with the watch, though I wouldn't recommend it on a regular basis. And in terms of the design of the outside of the watch, we do see this beautiful cylindrical case, which is wonderfully polished, and the, the time really has been taken very clearly 
to, um, to, to bevel the edges, as you can see, and to really provide the, the utmost care. For example, it has the, the logo and, and Type 250 engraved into the case back. And it's not a laser etching, this is quite a deep engraving. It's difficult to show you in the video because it's, it's a flat engraving, but, uh, but it is very deep and you can certainly feel it running your finger over it. An even deeper engraving is seen on the crown, as you can see, um, if I can just get the camera to focus. Um, and that provides a, a, a nice aspect of, um, of, of a sort of a tactile finish to the crown and makes it again a, a little bit more of a quality item. Equally, you do see this, this floating bezel, which is by far my favourite aspect of the watch because it's very reminiscent of the chromed um, uh, exteriors of, of dials in the 1950s, and I feel does show this watch to be a, a piece of design which is inspired by its era, but not confined to it. And the bezel is, as I've said, floating, so it does break down the profile of the watch, and, and, and uh, effortlessly smooths into that, that sapphire crystal, which is double-domed and double anti-reflective coated, which is very, very rare to see at this price point. In fact, I haven't seen the watch before with, um, with a double-domed sapphire crystal with the, the, the two-sided anti-reflective coating at this price, which is, again, an impressive aspect. And the care taken to make that flow and uh, flow directly into the crystal and, and make it flush with it is a really excellent move, and I feel does add to the, the watch itself by giving that, that clear steel border around the dial, which I do think helps the design very, very profoundly. Additionally, you do see in terms of straps, um, these um, quick release pins, which make it much quicker to change a strap. And the strap is really very, very nice quality leather um, and, and is very, very soft with Durenzo on the inside of the strap, as you can see. Um, and the only uh, complaint I would have about the strap is that it, it is a little bit plain in terms of its design. Um, and I feel that perhaps uh, some, some more complex straps might be, um, uh, might be a, a good move for the brand in future to offer a little bit more to the buyer. Um, and similarly, the same can be said for the, the, the buckle, which is nicely made and high quality with, uh, with a signed um, uh, buckle. But I, I would appreciate something a little bit more complex or a little bit more, uh, more different and unique to tie in with the watch itself. But certainly on the wrist, the watch does wear extremely well. And as you can see, my, my, my six and a half or six and three quarter inch wrist, depending on the, the external air temp temperature, um, does, does wear it extremely well. And as you can see, those 47 or 48 millimeter lugs do wrap around the, the wrist extremely well whilst the case back sinks in and reduces the footprint in contact with the wrist, which does help make it more comfortable. Additionally, this strap, though perhaps a little bit bland, is extremely supple and very, very comfortable to wear. And the crown doesn't dig into the wrist because it's, it's small enough to, to fit in that way, but, uh, but not too small to not be easy to use. And again, the legibility is very, very good due to those, those fairly unique hands and that, that anti-reflective coating on the crystal. Anyway, having been very impressed by this watch, and, and I feel uh, impressed by the value it offers for about 300 to 310 pounds, uh, I do think it's quite a, quite a fantastic piece, um, and, uh, and an interesting piece from a new brand. And certainly in a world where horology is facing difficult years, it's great to see new brands flourishing, and producing new and, and very attractive pieces, with, with aesthetics that we haven't really seen before, and that have been untapped until this point. So I would strongly encourage you to have a look at their website uh, down below, and, and again, their Kickstarter page as well, um, because I, I do think they're worthwhile having a look at if you have an interest in horology and motor racing. So I'll conclude the video here, and uh, uh, please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel and to enjoy more content here in future. Also, do, do leave your comments down below and on snaps about this watch as to what you think of it, and, and as the, of the, um, the motorsport watch in general. So thank you very much for watching. This is Sam on the Watch Guy, over and out.